Lord is good. And all the times. If you are here with me. Can we praise our God once again? Praise God, church members. Amen. Thank you so much. It is a great day when we are having a special Sabbath for special people in the kingdom of God. And these are none other than Adventist Prosperity Ministry members. <clears throat> I want to start by appreciating this church. Indeed, you are doing great things to support this ministry. In a couple of days ago, we were able to have an APM convention where we received quite a number of delegations from this church. And I want to announce to us that because you supported our convention by sending those children of God, we were able to hold a very successful convention where the climax was baptism. What do you say, church members? And I'm happy to let you know that some of the people who are baptized came from this church and are here with us today. May I have those who are baptized from here during our convention. May you kindly stand so that these people can confirm that God has a special ministry and a mission to prosperity members. Please come in front. Kindly come in front. We had uh, over 100 people attending, and my brother here was one of the people who accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior and is your member now. How many of us are receiving him into membership? Thank you so much. We love you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. Again, I want to appreciate this church again for supporting the work in South Nairobi, Kachado, Phil. Last year, we had a fundraiser where you were able to contribute about 30 million towards the purchase of the headquarters land. I appreciate everyone who was able to sacrifice when it was not a normal time of doing fundraising to have coming out there to come and support that fundraiser. God bless you in a rich way. I'm also reminding us that we have a few coins we need to raise so that we clear the purchase of that land. And I'm now inviting each one of us to join in the arrangement and the groups that we have as a church and make sure that in those groups where you're going to participate and join, you contribute towards supporting the clearing of the balances that we have of the purchase of the South Nairobi Kachado Field Headquarters land. The fundraiser is on, 6th, on 5th of June, the coming month. Let me again remind us, in history, this is the first time church members are participating in the purchase of the headquarters land. Make sure your name appears 
in the books of history. So that when you come there for services, when you come to that conference in the coming days, you are able to touch, this stone was purchased by me. This wall, these windows, I have a hand in, the, in these windows. The, the roof, I have a hand. The ground where I'm stepping on, I have a hand in the purchase of this ground. Purpose to be part of this great history. The many people who would believe and accept Jesus Christ as Lord of the Sabbath, as their personal Savior in South Nairobi, Kachado Field, your name would be against those people who have accepted to be church members of the Sabbath because you contributed mission reached them far and near. Don't be left out. Be part of this history. I appreciate what the church has done. They have a very aggressive arrangement of how you are going to participate. Kindly make sure you participate in this noble cause. How many of us are going to participate? Are going to assist us? Clear the balance of that land. Let me see by show of hands. Jesus is watching. How many of us are going to uh, contribute? How many of us are going to do the support of purchasing South Nairobi Kachado field at Quarters land? Let me see. By show of hands, Jesus is watching and is taking roll call. How many of us? Let me see. By show of hands, let me see. Those of us who are purposing to go and engage in this arrangement, God bless you, and may God remember your families, even may God increase and extend your boundaries of income in Jesus' name. Don't be left out. I now ask that we go to the Bible, the book, John chapter 5, First, one onwards. I prefer the new international reader's version. While you are there, Bible says, sometime later, Jesus went to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, near the ship gate was a medicinal spring by the name Pedicida in Alamaic language, which means the place of mercy. The Bible says that around this spring, around this bull, it was a resort for people with disability. It was overcrowded and the people who overcrowded that bull were none other than people with disability. Bible says, there was this man who was waiting around this spring. And this man was there waiting for an opportunity to get healing from the, medicine, the medicinal spring that was in Jerusalem by the gate of the ship. 
This man, the Bible says, he was there waiting. He was there waiting for over three decades. But around this time, Jesus came. And then, when Jesus observed the face of this man, he recognized sorrow. He found a man who was in deep suffering, a man who was in need of healing, a man who was in need of help. Therefore, Jesus asked him, Gentleman, do you want to be well? The man answered and said, I have no one. The title of our sermon is The Forgotten. The Forgotten. The man was there not one day, not one year, but more than three decades, the man was waiting there, waiting for help, waiting for healing. The man was waiting. People come and leave. People come and leave. If he was in Jerusalem, people could come for worship. People could come for prayers. People could come for car meetings. People could come for morning prayers. People could come for youth meetings. Yes, they could come to Jerusalem. But this man was there for more than three decades. The forgotten. The forgotten. He was forgotten because... He gives a testimony and confirms there is no one because I am forgotten. Everyone else finds help. Everyone else has found healing. But for me, I am forgotten. The Bible tells us that this place was called Pethesida. It is in Alamaic, which means the place of mercy. Which means the house of mercy. Yes, given the understanding of this bull by the name Pethesida, it is an Alamaic word, the house of mercy. Here we find an irony. Yes, it was a place of mercy, but here was a crowd of many people who knew not mercy. Here is a man of God, disabled, a person with disability who came for healing, who came to have an experience, who came to be assisted, but he never received because it reminds us that the church of God is a house of prayer. It reminds us the church of God is a place of experiencing Jesus Christ. It reminds us the church, the place of worship is a place where we can come and worship and meet with our maker and creator Jesus Christ. But here in this text, we have a class of people who have never received those services in the church of God. They're forgotten. Yes, we come to church to confess our sins. 
Yes, we come to church to repent our sins. Yes, we come to church, all of us, because church is a place for everyone. But here in this text, the gospel according to John, we find a class, a group of people who have never experienced the goodness of having the church in our midst. Why? Because the church is inaccessible. Why? Because we have forgotten these people even in the manner in which we do our infrastructures. The manner in which we do our pulpits. The manner in which we do our entry and exit points. The manner in which we have excluded these people by denying them the scriptures because I am blind, I cannot read, therefore I have been forgotten because I can't access God's word. The forgotten. Here is a class of people. The church is a place of healing. The sanctuary is a place where I need an experience with my God. But then I have been prevented from accessing this Jesus in the church. Because you come to church, I am left at home because of my physical condition. Here, we find a class of people who have been forgotten. The children of God today, I need to remind us, you and I, we are potential prosperity members. And therefore, and therefore, let everyone access the presence of Jesus Christ, the king of the universe, the creator and the healer of all our diseases. The Bible says, when the man was asked, do you want to be well? The response of the gentleman is I have no one. Today in this church and those of us who are with us in this worship from wherever corner you are, I want to ask you this question. Are you ready to go and help a person with disability access Jesus Christ? Are you ready? Are you available? Are you available, my brother, my sister, to go and say, when we people with disability, when we say there is no one, would you say, I am here, and I want people with disability to be found in the kingdom? Are you there? Are you there? I challenge you. You are a potential member of prosperity ministry. Therefore, you're going to be available because it is good for all of us to meet Jesus Christ. It is good for all of us to know that Jesus is coming again. It is good for all of us to also engage in doing service and ministry for our God regardless of our abilities as children of God. Is there anyone? The man said, no one is there. The question I pose to you, is there anyone who is ready even to sacrifice and purchase a Bible that is usable with me who is not able to see? Are you there? Are you there? If you are there, are you ready 
to go an extra mile and have me meet with my Jesus because I'm also requiring the kingdom. The man said, there is no one. How many of us in this church will say, yes, I will do whatever it takes to support people with disability see Jesus Christ. How many of us, you have an answer. You have an answer. Church members, the church may be accessible, but what about other facilities? Am I able to access my pastor in this church? Because of my condition, am I able to access the baptistry? Am I able to access the washroom? Am I able? Yes, the message for today is let us remember those we have forgotten. Let us remember them. My last exposition comes from second Kings, Second Samuel, chapter 9. In Second Samuel, chapter 9, we find a servant of God, and I thank the children's uh, presentation. It's like the Holy Spirit speaking in this place. In Second Samuel, we find a man of God by the name of Fifoset. This man, we are told, he was a person with disability. And because of his nature, he decided to go and reside in a place called Lo Debar. And for those of us who may not be knowing, Lord Bar was a place where those who were excluded in the community could find a home. Lord Bar was a place where those people who are not recognized, the people who are stigmatized, the people who are of low value as by human standards, Lord Bar was a home for such a kind of people. But this time round, it was a grandson of the king who was in Lord Bar. Now the man of God by the name Sibra is asked this question by King David. Is there anyone this servant of King Saul responds by saying, mm, yeah, there is one, but this one who's there from the family of King Saul is a person with disability. Therefore, this man, yes, you're looking for one man, from the household of King Saul to show kindness to him, but no king. There is one I know, but this one whom I know is not fit to come to the king's palace. It reminds me, it reminds me how some of us, we are behaved just like the servant of King Saul by the name Sibyl, by saying, yes, we have these people with disability in our midst. Yes, we have them in our homes. Yes, we have them in our community. Yes, we have them in our neighborhood. But then, they can't access the church. Yes, they are there. Those with facial impairment, they are there. But do you think they are necessary, it's necessary for them to come to church. Yes, people who have mobility challenges, 
Yes, they are there in our neighborhood. They are there in our homes. But do you think it's necessary for them to come to church? Yes, we have people with the hearing impairment. Yes, they are there. But do you think this is necessary for them to come to church? It is a wastage of resources. It is a wastage of funds to have them, to have infrastructure, to have them in the church. It is wastage. Yes, they are there. You are behaving like the servant of King Saul. Bible tells us even Mephibosheth himself the son of Jonathan he knew himself that he was not he was nobody first 8 says first 8 says Mephibosheth knew himself he was a dog, not only a dog, but a dead dog. People of God, children of the king of the universe, let me submit to you, people with disability, they are equally God's children and they can access the table of the king because King David here represents King Jesus. Therefore, David said, yes, I know he's a person with disability, but I tell you, go and tell him to come. God's people today, God's people today, get it clear. The scripture is telling us, is reminding us that all of us, we have access to the king of the universe who is none other than Jesus Christ. My brother, Pastor Minor, please stand up. I want people to see you. Please come in front. Come in front. And stand here with me. For many years, this is a man of God by the name Henry Minor. He is a trained pastor from the University of Eastern Africa, Baraton. Is he any lesser pastor than me? Members, I'm asking you. Is he a lesser pastor than me? Is he a pastor like me? Can God use him? Yes, there is prosperity in impossibilities. He was our main speaker in our convention. And we realized baptism. There is prosperity in impossibility. Man of God, you can go back. I am saying... We want to embrace and accept each and every one of us as created in the image of God and a candidate for the kingdom of God. Today, as I wind up this sermon, I want to bring another aspect. We have another class of people with disability. This is a class of people who have been disabled because of their evil habits. I have another class of people with disability and these are the people who have been paralyzed by the sin and the evils of this world. I have another class of people with disability, and these are the people, even though they hear, they have closed their ears from the good news of the gospel. I have another class of disability, 
people who want to hear to hear things of the world but they do not want to hear anything that is about the kingdom of Jesus Christ if you are here you are also a person with disability that's why Jesus is passing calling do you want to be well Jesus is coming calling do you want to be well yes I may assume that me, I do not have a disability, but because of my sinfulness, because of my wickedness, because of my love of the world, than loving Jesus Christ, I am physically disabled and I'm spiritually disabled. Jesus is coming around. He's asking, do you want to be well? Church members, do you want to be well? Wherever who's participating in our worship today, Jesus is asking this question. Do you want to be well? Yes, Jesus Christ commanded the disabled man by this pool, carry your mat and do what? Carry your mat and do what? Jesus commanded. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the source of our healing. I want to ask us to identify our disabilities, either spiritual or physical, and open your ear and listen to God speak to you, and stand and say, yes, I was sick, but Jesus healed me. The experience of Jesus Christ in the sanctuary, in the temple of Jerusalem, was that here was a bull full of people with disability. And inside the sanctuary, there were people full, but these were spiritually disabled. Jesus is declaring healing upon each one of us. You might have been in this church for many years, but you have never experienced Jesus Christ in your personal life. Yes, you came with a burden in your life. Today, Jesus is telling you, do you want to be well? He will release you from all the emotional challenges, the psychological challenges you might be undergoing now. Jesus is asking, do you want to be well? Those of us who are struggling with some disease and illness, for many years you have been visiting hospitals. Yes, today Jesus is asking you, do you want to be well? Yes, by his hands, he will heal you today. Have faith and you'll be healed. I know somebody might be struggling with grief. You have lost a loved one. You have lost a close family member. You are emotionally challenged. Today, Jesus is asking the question, do you want to be well? Say, yes, I want to be well, and all shall be well with you. It's my prayer this afternoon in Jesus' name. I want to conclude my sermon. By asking my brother, Moses Kianjui, please come. He will give a statement to close my sermon. Moses Kianjui is one of us who I'm preaching with. The church is friendly. Moses is out there, is outside. Moses. Brother Moses. Is coming. Yes, so members, what are we doing here today? I am asking you members that now let us go and minister and share Jesus Christ to people with disability. Are we together? The awareness I'm creating today is sacrifice your resources. Sacrifice your time, sacrifice whatever you have 
so that you can be of ministry with these people because they are also required in the kingdom. He will speak from here. He will speak from here. I will speak from here. Please give him a mic. I want him to give a statement of five minutes because he always concludes my sermon. He always concludes my sermon. Okay, let me go there. Uh, prepare the way. Uh, can Colesters give us an item as the man of God comes? Colesters, please give us an item. song for the day, our theme song 180 Oh, listen to a wondrous story um, yeah. It's requesting that we sing 462, a special request from our brother, Blessed Assurance Blessed assurance. Four six two. One stanza, please. Assurance was written by someone who was blind, Crosby, and uh, she wrote many, many songs. Today, uh, I don't know what uh, message to tell you, especially after the pastor has uh, preached. But, uh, children of God, as Pastor said, Moses. I worship Mount Olives, and uh, I was informed that Mount, Mount Olives has a special relationship with this church. It was a prayer cell and then a Sabbath school of this church. And the elders and the leadership of that church told me to say hi to every one of you. Uh, what do you say, church? Uh, today, I want to tell you two or three things. And from my experience, and as a person with disability, uh, people with disabilities are people like any one of us. 
they are children of God who are created in the image and the likeness of God. We all need God and we all need salvation. Yes, I am happy today to be here with you, but sometimes many of us, those uh, who have a disability, one disability or another, there are various barriers which uh, prevent us from coming to church. Like just now you've seen, yes, I am happy the church is uh, accessible than many of our places of worship. But you can see it's not fully accessible. We can do better. We can improve and ensure that persons with disabilities can access our places of worship and give thanks and be part of us. Uh, Pastor is a good friend of mine. Uh, we met when we were organizing the APM convention and uh, he has challenged me. I am not used to speaking to a congregation such as this but I find myself a blessing to someone because the society we live in, we live in a society that is not so kind and so loving. Why am I saying this? Uh, I give you an example. Someone, uh, a person with disability, a physical disability, who uses a wheelchair and he or she wishes to come to church. There are many barriers right from where that person probably lives. Our public transport, for example, like me, for example, it's, unless I have someone, it's a challenge. And in most cases, our public transport uh, service providers, when they see a person using a wheelchair, in most cases, they may not be willing to carry you. And therefore, those are some of the barriers that we are talking about, that we are saying that society is not friendly, is not kind to us. So the message, my message to you, are you that one man, as the pastor has given us the sermon, to help that person with disability to enter the pool? Are you that person to welcome us and to say, I am here to help you see the kingdom of God? People with disability need you. They need me. My story, uh, I come from a very poor background. And due to illness, sometime when I was in Form 3, uh, I got paralyzed so that I can, I am not able to fully use my legs. And fortunately, I had people who loved me, my family, my brother. Those are the people who I thank God for, for they were there to put me in the pool. And now, I am not a burden, but a blessing. A blessing to my family and a blessing to the people who assist me. Church, people with disabilities can do much, much better. Thank you and God bless you. And finally, to tell you that it is possible, I got, I, I got a disability when I was in Form 3. 
and because of the love of my family and many many other people I am now a lawyer and an advocate of the High Court of Kenya thank you church and continue uh, being a blessing to us and I know there are thousands of persons with disabilities who need your love, who need your care. God bless you and remember us. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Moses. Jesus asked the man, do you want to be well? The man answered, there is no one. Is there someone who wants to commit his life to support this ministry, to support these people in your neighborhood, wherever you are, if you are there, may we join these choristers by standing up to continue the song, Blessed Assurance. May we be upstanding. We go to the second stanza. Perfect in light, visions of rapture now passed on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of Story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Father God in heaven, the creator of the universe, God the king of kings, we come before you asking that Lord you may forgive us. Lord forgive us because many times we have been unkind to your children people with disability. My Father God, forgive us for as a church we have excluded your children from accessing the church and the sanctuary, a place of worship for all. Lord, forgive us 
For we have locked in our houses and our homes people with a disability whereas we come to church to worship you, Lord. Father, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. For I know you have a purpose for each one of us to get eternal life. For you died on Mount Calvary not to save a few, but to save all of us. My Father, thank you for this Seventh-day Adventist Church. They have tried as much as they can to have failed the good news to everyone. It's my prayer that may lead them to do even much more to have full accessibility to all who want to come before you. Even so, Lord, today is a reminder that even as spiritually we are disabled, Lord, open our eyes so that we can see and come to you confessing and repenting our sins. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to us we are disabled because of the love of this world and the things of this world. We are blind to the issues and things that are spiritual. Now, Lord, the healer and the great physician, may you heal each one of us. Some of us, we have come here today before you expecting healing from our physical diseases. Father, may that one get healing in your holy name. Yes, there is your child, your servant before you today who is experiencing emotional challenges. Lord, may you heal that one and touch that one. There is somebody who does not know to do what because of the issues of this life. Father, hold his hand. Hold her hand and minister to her or him in a special way. And today, as you continue speaking to us, may the message you have spoken to us inspire each one of us. So the Lord, we can go out our way. We can go an extra mile to be of ministry to our children or people with disability. Dismiss us with your love. Dismiss us with your blessings. And may we continually dwell under your feet even as we wait upon you and look upon you on Mount Calvary declaring it is finished for our salvation and redemption is sure our prayer through Jesus' name. Amen.